So as promised, this is a quick video on the UV Master in ZBrush. Um, when we start off with this, I have a model here which uh, has subdivision levels, um, five subdivision levels. I can scroll down to level one. You can see that's the low resolution cage that I have. And level five is the higher, denser one. So if you're starting off with a Dynamesh object that you've sculpted and you want to unwrap it, because Dynamesh is just doesn't have subdivision levels, it's just quite dense. It's usually, you know, it'll be in a million polygons or whatever. Um, it's a, a not, it's not advisable really to try and unwrap that. You're better off creating a copy of your object, Z remeshing that, uh, uh, giving that some subdivisions and projecting your detail from your Dynamesh object over onto your new object. So you can see that process in the video where I actually sculpted this, where I explained that a little bit. And um, so ultimately you should end up with a model which has a low resolution cage and a high resolution one with all of the detail on it. So this has polypaint information on it, just to show you what that would look like. If I go to Z plugin, um, I'll, I'll turn on uh, magnifying glass and we go down to, I, we could just hit unwrap on this and we would attempt to do an unwrap, but it's not going to let us because it's going to say we need to be on subdivision level one and we're currently on subdivision level five. Um, so if I do that, we get this warning. Um, if I try and hit flatten on this to see the UVs, it's going to tell us that this is only allowed on a mesh without subdivision levels. So in other words, it's, it's saying we don't really like you using this kind of model for unwrapping. And even if I try and hit the uh, enable control painting here, again, it's going to say this function requires a model with no subdivision levels. And it's going to advise that we use the clone feature. So let's just do exactly that. You'll see that we only have one sub tool in here, uh, which is this. So if I go back to Z plugin menu and and I hit the work on clone option, you can see that it generates a new sub tool over here, the clone version. This is our original, the one we were just looking at, and then it's created this new tool over here, which is the clone. I'll just turn off the magnifying glass for a second. Shift M to turn that on and off. Uh, Shift F to turn on the frames just to see what this looks like. So with this on now, um, we can actually unwrap, we can hit enable control painting and we can flatten this. The idea behind this is that what we're going to do is, is unwrap here and then copy these UVs and paste them back into the original model. So if I just hit unwrap without doing anything on this, it's actually going to do a fairly decent attempt at making an unwrap. I would say decent, ZBrush is not good at unwrapping. Um, if you're going to do this professionally, you'll have to go into Maya, Blender, Max, 3ds Max, something like that. You can't really do it um, professionally in, in ZBrush. It's kind of, it's weak. It's very weak. Um, so th this has done an unwrap now. If we want to see what that looks like, we go to Z plugin and hopefully you can see this. We just hit the flatten button and that's going to show us what that actually looks like inside our zero to one UV space here. Um, the advantage of doing this in ZBrush actually <laughs> There's one, if we use a move brush, um, we can actually start moving this around while it's in this mode, this flattened mode. If you need to uh, relax or you know stretch out an area, you can hold down the shift key if you need to relax areas, etc. cetera. Um, it, will, it will do all that. So we can adjust this if we, if we need to. Um, for example, I'll make an extreme change here. If we made this shape appear for whatever reason, uh, I'm not saying that you would, but let's say you did that. Um, and then you decide you go back to Z plugin and you'll hit unflatten. That UV will now be there. And you can see that um, there are two ways to see your UVs. You can also go down to the UV map over here. And in here you can hit morph UV. If you turn bump on 50, it's gonna show you detail. We don't have an awful lot of detail on this model because it's the low res. So I'm just gonna turn that down and hit morph UV. And that will actually show us um, that change that we made earlier on, you can see. Um, so that, that flattened, while, while it was flat, it did allow us to edit those UVs. We morph that UV back to see. And um, that funky, you know, um, unfolding and folding only happens at under a million polygons, anything over that, and it'll just kind of pop to being unfolded or folded. But um, So from here, it can be hard to see exactly where those lines are, where those seams are, where, the, you know, the cuts. So there is an option in here that you can turn on called check seams. And there, when you turn that on, you'll get these orange lines, which kind of show you where the cuts are in this. And as you now, when we morph, you actually they make more sense. 
So it's cutting down. But let's say we didn't want to actually cut along here. We wanted to keep this protected for whatever reason. So if we go back into Z plugin now, we can turn on enable control painting. So when I turn on enable control painting, um, I had a, a move brush selected over here, but when I turn on enable control painting and I hit protect, it's going to do a couple of things. It's going to change um, the, the color to this bright red color here, which is 25500. Uh, if I'm going to change back to a standard brush, and you'll see that the standard brush, it's also turned on RGB on the standard brush, but it's turned this off. This would be on by default. So I'm just going to change our stroke type. Um, turn off this magnifying glass and I'll just basically with symmetry turned on I'm going to paint and say I don't want any seams in these areas here so on the front of my mask I basically don't want anything now I did that very very roughly so I'm sure I have a lot on the back I'm not going to worry about that too much I'm basically saying protect these from seams I'll go back into Z plugin and you can see that we also have the attract so as soon as I hit attract this color over here will now change to blue so we can now say, well, we want to attract seams into the following area. So I'm happy enough for the seam to be along the outside of my model, around here, um, inside of here, basically anywhere around here, I'm happy for it to be. Um, and also if for whatever reason, um, some of this has spilled over uh, because I don't have back face masking on, I'll go back to my protect, I'll make my bush a little bit smaller and I'll say, actually, I want to protect that area here. Don't want any seams there. All right. So let's say, let's pretend I'm happy with that. Um, and this area doesn't really matter, but we could go back in here and we could turn on um, erase. And all erase will do is it will change this color over here to white. And you remember when we first had this model open, this was white. So we're saying basically uh, erase any protect or attract detail or uh, information from these areas. I'm saying. Now, we don't have back face masking turned on. If you go to your brush and auto masking, turn on your back face mask while you're doing this painting. I'll turn off spray as well. Um, we can you know, uh, get a slightly better result. I'll go back to protect to make sure we have the right color red here. And I'll just protect these areas again. And you see that, that because I had the masking on, it's now not painting through that into the other area. So this is roughly what I want. Um, I'll just do a slightly better job on attracting the seams to uh, the eye sockets, the inside of the eye socket, anywhere around there. Uh, and like I said, ZBrush is not perfect at this stuff, like it really isn't. So um, what we'll do now is uh, we'll see what that looks like. So all we have to do is hit unwrap. We had that check seams still excuse me, still turned on. So um, that should show us where these seams are once it's done. And hopefully we no longer, and you can see now that those seams that were going across our model here have disappeared. And now most of the seams are along the edges on our outside our model uh, and around our eye holes, eye sockets. Now it didn't, uh, it didn't change the, uh, actually if I, if I morph the UV, you can see that it's actually created two, two islands here. Um, which means that uh, those seams were actually allowing us to do to um, you know we, we, we cut in an area that would allow it to cut into two places so once this is done we could go into polygroups and auto group this and it will look and it will see that these are two separate islands and with polygroup selected if we go into a move tool and uh, we can hit control and click on one of these which will mask that and then turn off symmetry and that allows us to adjust this slightly and move these uvs around to something that may and control and click on this one to may suit us a little bit more like i said we can we can modify this with a standard move brush if you need to for whatever reason as well um, once you're finished with that you just hit unflatten it doesn't really matter whether masking is there or not and that was just for the purposes of moving that stuff around so that's how you unwrap uh, and then from there you'll hit you've now finished with that unwrap so you'll hit copy uvs um, if you wanted to, you can actually save the control map, which is that uh, control painting up here. You can save that and then load it later on. If you want to try again later on, you don't want to lose whatever uh, painting you've done. But having copied those UVs, having hit copy UVs here, now all we need to do is go back to our original 
model and it doesn't matter that we're on subdivision level five or not we just hit plug in and we hit paste uvs and that will actually paste those uvs in here now once this is done you'll notice that the check seams i can't actually turn this on and off um, and this won't allow us to do this on this kind of model uh, and flatten as we said earlier on doesn't work when we have multiple subdivisions so the only way we're going to see these seams really is to go down the subdivision levels to something like this go back to our uv map and hit morph uv and you'll see that's what they look like uh, and that includes whatever changes that we made to this so I hit more UV to turn it back and you see that that kind of funky folding and unfolding slow motion kind of thing works very well. If I go in my sub tilt, go up to um, our four and a half million polygon uh, option, I hit the same thing and I hit more UV, you'll see that it just kind of pops into place um, and it's a lot slower to do it uh, because it's got a lot more polygons to actually work with and it'll pop back into place afterwards because they don't want to use the computer to you know the the cpus cycles to actually calculate that kind of stuff which is fair enough anything over a million polygons it will basically pop anything less it will fold um it's just an aesthetic thing it doesn't really matter so that's how we will copy and paste the uvs we've now officially done our unwrap there is one last thing that we can do with this um and that's i'm, I'm back on the clone now uh, if we go back into this when we enable the control painting you can try you can try and use the attract from ambient occlusion which will paint the ambient occlusion say well these are the areas where we're going to put the seams and that often works for characters underneath armpits for example will get more occlusion so and that's obviously where you probably want your seams so sometimes that works sometimes it doesn't in this instance it doesn't i'd rather have my seams along the edges down here at the back not underneath the these prom prominent landmarks so in this instance i, I wouldn't actually use that um so we can erase that by just, oh, <laughs> we had our standard brush on, we can just paint that out. And we can just fill it actually even with that color. Um, and the last thing is the density. So with the density, uh, we can, you'll see that there, there's different colors for this. So again, it's all about the, the painted color, the RGB is turned on. Uh, if I hit times four, you'll see that this color is bright green. If I go back in here and as I lower this value, you'll see that this green color changes into a paler green and eventually goes into blue, goes into white when it's neutral, starts going into cyan, deeper and deeper cyans as we're saying more. So we're saying that we want less texture space for the following polygons. So if we're saying that, for example, this area in here is really not that important, we want less texture space assigned to that, but we want four times the texture space assigned to here for whatever reason, then we're going to get um, an unwrap that actually gives us four times the amount of polygons or space on the texture sheet for this area here. So if we now go back uh, and we do the unwrap again, you may or may not see a change here, but uh, you should see a change. And you'll see that now the seams have actually gone because we're now using our density um, rather than our protect and erase and because we've, we've done that if we flatten this now you see that um, we've got a different look to this and um, because it's it's giving a very few polygon or, uh, polygon space for this area here um, and if I unflatten that that is that area over here so that is one way to try and get more density it's again it's not great ZBrush is not really good at uh, unwrapping but you know it, it'll do a job uh, and you can just copy these uvs again come back over to your original go back to plug in and hit paste uvs uh, and that will paste them in so hope this helps and um, like i said you can use them these uvs aren't awful uh, like this you could absolutely use this and it's, it's it's you know it's perfectly acceptable if you're going to do it professionally you'd be using a dcc like 3ds max or maya or blender or something like that but I uh, hope these tips help and if you have any other questions or suggestions for tutorials do let me know and do remember to like and subscribe and comment. Thank you. Bye.